This podcast is a production of WCWP, LIU Public Radio. Check out our lineup of original programs. Listen live or support by visiting WCWP.org. The following is a presentation of Project Independence and WCWP. Project Independence is the Aging in Place initiative of the Town of North Hempstead. We provide programs and services designed to assist and support the older town residents who wish to remain in their homes as they age. If we don't currently provide a service, we will try and connect you to that service. Call 311 or 869-6311 to get more information or receive services. Welcome to Project Independence and you. Welcome to Project Independence in You, right here at WCWP.org, 88.1 on your radio dial. And um, we are recording this show on Zoom. Today, our um, our host, co-host is Otto Lose. Good morning. How are you doing, Otto? I'm here. <laughs> Good morning. Otto, it, Otto, you are like an original Project Independence member and volunteer. Um, You sit on a lot of different committees. You're constantly helping us out for which we will never ever be able to repay you for, but we're going to double your salary. (laughs) So we just wanted to let you know that. So whatever you're making from us is double, triple it actually. Um, I'm sure the supervisor will be fine with that. Yeah. But um, so when, when, out of just, just out of curiosity, what year did you start with us? with Project Independence as a volunteer? I believe the first year was like, there was a mini, mini meeting around 2004, 2005. Uh, So it was then. Right. And your mother was involved and Madge Kaplan. Right. And Madge, Madge was the commissioner back then. And we just started off with that, you know, small little Nork in Northern New Hyde Park. And who knew? Who knew? 16 (laughs) years. Who knew? Who knew? 15 years. Years later, we'd be on a Zoom during a pandemic talking to Dr. Susan Linder with Christina Liu as the fabulous radio show producer. So here we are, 2020, and um, we are going to be talking today with um, Dr. Susan Linder. And Susan, you're a licensed clinical psychologist, um, and we're going to be talking about mental health during the COVID-19 pandemic, which, you know, is really important. And I'm sure it started out as people just being afraid of the virus, and now it's morphed into, you know, what it is today, three months later, and the, the entire country is in different phases of closing and reopening and um, the numbers for the, you know, the impact has just been incredible. So um, we're, we have, a, it's, I think it's going to be a really good show. And we're looking forward to getting some information, um, some information from you. And I'm sure Otto has done his research and has a lot of questions too. Um, so maybe just, just to start out, because we um, do all kind of understand the situation, the pandemic. Um, I, I, early on, I'm sure the fears and concerns were different than, than they are today, like when people were just simply afraid of getting sick. Now it's kind yes. of morphed into, you know, anxiety and stress and family members and loss and mourning and job. I mean, so m- I mean, it's just the, if you don't yes. have anxiety, it's like 99% of you are going to have experience it to some degree because of everything that's happened. Um, so what, what was it like in the beginning? What was, what were you kind of seeing or understanding, um, as the original kind of onset of fears that people were having? Um, you know, I have to tell you from the onset, I think our community on the large whole was very proactive. So the fear was there, but the capacity to take precautions follow the CDC, which is Center for Disease Control, recommendations and guidelines, the federal and state guidelines. They were shared, as we know, on all types of media. And our community, I found, was really quite compliant. So everyone just really, you know, bunkered down, got their food, and uh, sat, like all of us, sat behind the TV to say, what's going on here? Let's try to figure this out. 
So I think initially it was shock for all of us, almost a sense of surrealism. I'll share with you that my other colleagues who are also clinical psychologists, they said that they feel like they're in a bad movie, but they can't get out of it and it's never going to end. You know, so I think all of us, I think, you know, initially, I think all of us had this sense of shock because we haven't had a pandemic in our, in over a hundred years since 1918, right? With the great Spanish flu. So this was something that was unprecedented in all of our lifetimes. And when something happens that's unprecedented, I always encourage everyone to first of all know that one, you're okay. Two, things always turn out. You will be okay. Just follow these safety precautions, stay safe, and we will get through this. I always instill hope because I do believe that we will get through this. And clearly, as we can see, we are getting through it. You know? Right. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point, you know, to also instill hope. It's kind of, you know, with the combination now of, of the protesters and now we have, you know, with the virus and the fears, but, um, you know, and people that have the existing anxiety um, to go through something like this, I'm sure enhances it to, <laughs> you know, a tenfold or a hundredfold or something. You know, like I that. spoke to my own medical doctor for a virtual annual appointment. And she said to me, you know, Dr. Susan, 35% of my virtual appointments are now for mental health issues. People need medications for the anxiety, for the depression, for the fact that all of right. the unknown is bringing out a lot of um, anxieties and worries. So yeah. We can know you know, and of course, we should ahead. normalize it. You know, if you if we have if our listeners are experiencing mental health issues, such as anxiety, worry, their spinning thoughts, they have a sense of like hopelessness, helplessness. They need to know first of all, they're not alone. It's it's actually more common than they think. And number two, there's always help. A phone call away. Right. Right. So it's so it's okay to start with your your general practitioner if you're having anxiety. It's not you don't have to immediately look up a therapist or a psychiatrist. You know, start out with your your doctor, and they can kind of direct you direct you from there. So of course, this is Project Independence in You, and we are the Department of Services for the Aging. So our primary audience that we deal with are seniors. You know, they're grandparents, they're widowed, they're isolated, they're frail, to the extremely active. And one of the things that, you know, I've kind of noticed is that we have a, we have a, a huge membership. We have 15,000 um, residents of North Hempstead that are 60 and over are actually Project Independence members. Um, and we have very active members too, those that participate in fitness classes and the health chats and like Otto volunteer for a lot of different things and show up and support and are vocal and engaging and, you know, whether it's a craft or it's a, you know, it's an intellectual conversation, they're extremely, extremely active. And then we also have seniors that are, you know, not necessarily isolated, but are in fact home and need a lot of supportive services and have family that helps them. But what I'm seeing now are these active seniors who are used to getting in their cars and doing their own shopping are being told you can't do that. You've got to, you know, be super safe because you want to be able to return to your life. So you have these, you know, people who are it well into their 80s. I mean, uh, most of Project Independence members are, you know, in their mid to late 70s, up into 100. We have, you know, at people that participate. So we're seeing like seniors who used to be super active and never really had to depend on anyone put in that, forced in that position, you know, to, to kind of like, they're afraid to go out now. They don't want to get sick. They can't do their walks, they can't do all these kinds of things. So, um, you know, it's a different kind of, you know, it's like, a, it's like a new suffering for them because they're, they ha they're still active and, and ready to go. So I'm curious if you have seen that too, you know, um, in, your, in your practice or from your colleagues. And what are some things that, 
that, you know, the seniors can do to kind of, you know, pep up and, and know that, like you said, you know, instill hope. Yeah. And this too shall end. You know, it, this is like a three part question you're asking me. First of all, let me respond yeah. to it with like part one is that a lot of our seniors are actually experiencing um, like what we would, ex what we define as the PTSD is being re-evoked. Why do I say PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder? Because a lot of our seniors have been through either World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, hmm? like, you know, the Great Depression. A lot of our seniors have really have known real hardship over their lifetimes. So we hit a pandemic, we're isolated in our homes, and there's a sense of re-traumatization that emerges PTSD is, just like we said earlier, it can manifest as anxiety or depression or worry or feeling of helplessness, hopelessness. That's number one. So if we have our seniors are experiencing any of those mental health issues, one, call your MD. Number two, along with that is physical symptoms. Although we're in a pandemic, I cannot um, emphasize enough the fact that it's so important that if you have a physical health condition. You need to do your follow-ups with your doctor and you need to stay on track with that. Don't put it off. There's a lot of fears. Don't go to the hospital. That's not necessarily true. A lot of people that were in the hospital and came out of it and they needed some like emergency surgery. I had someone who just had a, a right hip replacement, had to get done. Home, he's home and he's well. So the bottom line is if someone is experiencing mental health issues such as that, there is help. That's part one of the question. But part two are, what do you do when you're home? You know, this is a great time of, I, I sort of have to reframe the fact that isolation doesn't have to be isolation from within oneself. Isolation is a connection to oneself. So isn't that great that you can figure out, you know what, I always, I want, let me pick up those knitting needles. Let me go into the kitchen and cook a meal. Let me call an old friend. Let me go into the garden. Or maybe I can just sit and uh, enjoy like this beautiful weather outside by myself. Let me ask my home care attendant to take me for a walk in the wheelchair. Um, the, the, the point here is to be proactive and an advocate for your own health, knowing that if you need support, there is support for you. But I am a firm that our listeners have a significant amount of internal strengths that they can pull into themselves and bring it out and find things that make them and make them feel that they have a sense of content and a sense of empowerment. Otto, I think we're coming very close to our first break. So maybe what we'll do is when we come back, we'll start off with um, Otto, I see you had your finger up, you had a question, you had a thought, um, and we'll be back with Otto and Dr. Susan, you like to be called, so we'll continue with that, Dr. Susan, um, talking about um, coping with stress during COVID-19, and you know, all the information is wonderful, and it's it's great for the seniors, but it's just, it's great for everybody. Um, and we will be back very soon. Project Independence is the Aging in Place initiative of the Town of North Hempstead. Some of the many services we offer include fitness classes, community education, information, and referral. Call 311 or 869 6311 to get more information or receive services. Okay, welcome back to Project Independence and You. We've been talking with Dr. Susan Linder, um, and we've been talking about coping with stress during. COVID-19. And I mean, everybody has experienced some type of stress, anxiety, something. I, I, I think it's fair to say that everybody, everybody in this world, definitely country, if not definitely state, has experienced something. But um, before we went to break, I know Otto wanted to bring up a point. <laughs> Oops. You didn't need that earpiece. I didn't need that. It keeps popping out. <laughs> Yeah, well, my point is really I'm, I'm always very interested in, in mental health and attitude because I think it makes up a, uh, a big part of what goes on in our life. You know, the only thing you really have anything to, to control is what goes on between your ears, basically. And uh, as far as that goes, 
I believe that everybody is kind of born with a different deck of cards, all right? We all have a different deck to play with. And some people have it a little easier in terms of adapting to change, uh, to revising how they're going to handle it. And other people have a very difficult time adapting to change and uh, uh, having a difficult time trying to develop an attitude. And I use the word develop because I don't think anybody is born with the, uh, a couple of people maybe, but not many, where you're born with this whoop de doo attitude, everything is perfect, and I'll never have a problem. But my point is that for some people, it is much more difficult to adapt to stress, to adapt to changes than it is for others. I know I have friends, uh, I, I talk to them, I try to get them to come around, but the facts of life are some people may never change and they may never come around. But the other side of it is that there are people who are more on the fence, if you will, who can be helped by somebody like Dr. Susan. And my point here is that um, people should not be ashamed of requiring uh, mental support, if you will, guidance, counseling. I like to use the word counseling or coaching um, in terms of your mental attitude and how you contend with things. Uh, and this is a true test right now, as you point out about, um, Susan, about looking back. Um, this is probably one of the more difficult times uh, globally, if you will. Uh, everybody has personal difficult times, but this is one that affects everybody. And um, it, it's, uh, there's no easy ticket here. The, the, you know, the old phrase about perception is reality. How you perceive the situation is reality, and uh, you can perceive it as poorly as you want, or say, you know, it could be a lot worse. It depends on your attitude. So I think my point here is that I believe that there are some people who can be helped, and my question to you is, um, there, like there are difficult situations where uh, it's tough. People may be can't get over that fence. Maybe they need uh, um, uh, pharmaceutical help, if you will, or drug support. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just philosophy that I'm spouting here. So, uh, <laughs> Susan, I'm looking to see here what you say. No, I, I'm in agreement with you. It's, it's, it's interesting, right? When we first started this, the last segment, I was going to say this really could be classified as what we call in psychology as an adjustment disorder. So you sort of read my mind, but I didn't want to use the word disorder because there's really nothing wrong with having problems adjusting. You know, once we know that you, I think I have like a five, you know, step action plan. You want to acknowledge what the problem is and then we need to, you know, make adjustments to it and we tweak it a little bit. But the end goal is that we have an action plan to help us figure out how do we adjust better. So it's very interesting that you said you're absolutely right. We're built differently. Our capacity to adjust may be different. It doesn't mean it's better or worse. It's just different. And for those who need some extra support, that's why we have so many great recommendations with the town. The town has resources. We have programs. We have um, a hotline. Uh, our producer, Christina Liu, is fantastic at being, she has been fantastic and continues to be, at being so on top of the game in terms of promoting the resources the town has. So those that are having problems with adjustment can make a phone call and very quickly they will be spoken, somebody will speak to them and offer them some guidelines or some resources, or we can just get out there and help you. So I, what the point here is that if there's someone who's not adjusting well, um, to check out the town's website for the resources that we have, they're abundant. And, um, and make that phone call because you're not alone. It's not only that, and sometimes calling a friend really doesn't help, you know, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it's really just, it's not about medication. It's just about having someone to talk to and process it. Um, one, one of the interesting things that I've been reading is, uh, particularly when you get to extreme situations like uh, suicide or uh, domestic abuse, uh, where technology comes into the equation, where people can do texting or chatting, um, which is, is less uh, 
what would be the right word, uh, less obvious than using a telephone. You know, if you're in a domestic situation that's abusive and a person who's abusing you is watching you, it may be difficult to use the phone, but you can chat and you can text a lot easier. So technology seems to be, um, you know, coming into this equation uh, more and more uh, during this whole pandemic, really. That's correct. Um, and we should let our seniors know that there is a phone service program, and I don't have the information with me, but if anyone's interested, I know they can send our uh, radio show a web, um, an email or make a phone call and we can get it. But those who need a cell phone that may not have one right now, um, there are programs where we can get cell phones for seniors. So if they don't have one, we can help them get um, a little bit up to speed with their technology. Right, yes, they, they can always call 311 or 869-6311. We have the um, Neighbors Helping Neighbors program, which also connects volunteers to people who want to speak to somebody, um, a resident that wants to speak to a volunteer. It's um, really taken off well, and it works a lot, you know, for people who don't have a lot of technology. It could be right to their own home phone. Um, and there's a privacy involved and we always kind of try to connect the right type of people to each other. It's very successful. I'm sure we'll be talking a lot about Neighbors Helping Neighbors in Talk of the Town because it's um, definitely, you know, pertinent right mm -hmm. now. Otto, how have you adjusted to this? I'm just curious. How have I adjusted to this? Um, I have the good fortune of... of uh, <laughs> really having very little difficulty keeping myself amused, if you will. Uh, <laughs> I've been working on uh, uh, projects for a long time, like uh, old movies that I've been editing and, and uh, putting, uh, digitizing them and sending them out to family, you know, cutting them into small clips and mm. doing uh, odds and ends, um, family tree. Uh, my wife and I will take a big ride over to Taco Bell and go through the drive through uh, you know, exciting things like that, uh, doing a jigsaw puzzle, yeah. talking to people, uh, keeping occupied. I actually, now I have the good fortune of being able to play golf. So uh, I would say uh, I haven't really had a big problem, to be perfectly honest with you. But I also realize that all my life I have been really working. I was in sales and marketing. Yeah. And... Uh, I was always big on uh, uh, your attitude and uh, reading about attitude and, and I guess mental health looking at it mm. um, and um, worked at developing an attitude that I think is uh, positive, um, not, not naive, but positive. Mm -hmm. So I think the answer to the question is I have been fortunate, but I do realize that um, for me, it's not as hard as it is for some people to adapt to this. I know people who um, had a real hard time uh, adapting to getting older mm. um, prior to the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and the facts of life are, I, who was the one I read? Alan Alda had a thing about adapt, adjust, and revise. Yes. And, and mm. what he says in there is that um, you have to adapt to the fact that when you get older, things start to rust, fall off, <laughs> don't work as good. Uh, all of the above. Mm. So you have to kind of revise how you handle things and uh, and uh, adjust to it. Yeah, that's cool. And I work at that. But I realize that it's easier for me than a lot of other people. Some people have a very, very hard time uh, adapting to stress and negative situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, anyhow, that's the answer to my question. Well, that's, to your question. that's great. Yeah. Yeah, Otto, you're really doing well. That's that's for sure, and we're we're grateful to have you on our team. That's that's a definite. Um, yeah, I like that uh, three-step plan that you just shared with us, yeah. with Alan Alan Alda. That's really good. You know, I have. We should try to get him on the show, should. Christina. Yeah, Can right. you work that out? Well, I thought it was a great idea. You know, I'm I'm big into all of that stuff, but. I believe you have to work at that. You have to work at, uh, you know, I wasn't born jumping out there with, uh, you know, whoop-de-doo, everything is great attitude. Um, 
I, you know, I think you have to work at it. Um, and, uh, yeah. you know, the, the, the story, the, the, the words that I try to understand when talking to people is perception is reality. And if you look at the televisions in front of you and somebody says, that's not a television, it's a Volkswagen, that in their perception, that's what that is. And, uh, you know, as crazy as it sounds, but that's what, how they see it. And that's hard to work with. And Dr. Yeah. Susan has to work with that kind of uh, perception. And that's not an easy thing to do, I don't think. Yeah. No, but I, I love what she, what Dr. Susan said in the very beginning, where you always, you know, yeah, there's hope in everything. Yeah. Right. You know. Um, yeah. You know. I have well, to, you have to. Yeah. You have to work with what you have. You have to work with what you have, and then you have to acknowledge what right. you do have. Listen, this was a great time. I just want to. I don't know if we have any time left, but I have to tell you, I cannot tell you. I don't have enough fingers and toes to tell you how many people, including myself, cleaned out closets during this pandemic. Mm. Right, reorganize themselves. And it was really a great time to cleanse out. And I always say cleansing yes. out the home is like cleansing out the soul. And when you cleanse out, then you create an open space. And isn't that fantastic? Because as we move forward, now there's an open space for new things to come into it. So getting ready to get Getting rid of right. some of the clutter from the past can actually be really quite empowering. And it gives us a lot of hope and there's some excitement with it. And are we doing life a little bit differently? We are. But just because it's different doesn't mean it's worse. It actually is very positive. These are positive changes bringing us all back connected together in different ways, empowered and helping each other and understanding the importance of really what everything means in life. And I really wish everyone well during this pandemic. What a wonderful way to kind of just go right to our break. We have a break and then um, we'll be right back speaking with Dr. Susan Linder. Project Independence is the aging in place initiative of the town of North Hempstead. One of the many services we offer is transportation for food, shopping, and medical visits. Call 311 or 869-6311 to get more information or receive services. Hey, welcome back to Project Independence and You, and we've been talking with Dr. Susan Linder um, about coping with stress with COVID-19 and um, getting some really good say advice and perspective and understanding and hope, which is really, really wonderful. Um, I was joking a little bit over the break. We'll get back to the, um, you know, kind of a lot of outline you've given us and we'll, you know, reflect back on that. But um, I've heard a lot about this quarantine 15. I think one of the, um, what's happening to a lot of people are a lot of people are gaining weight. Mm -hmm. Because they're home, you can't, you know, you can't, and in the very beginning, at least, no one, everybody was afraid to even take their walks. You know, your gyms are closed, your yoga studios are closed, you know, um, and a lot of people are saying, too, that they've never cooked so much in their lives. They've made lots of dishes, so there's, there's lots of eating going on and not as much exercise. So, you know, I want to hear some hopeful advice from you on that point. <laughs> Not that I gained the full 15, but I do know, you know, a lot of people, see uh, people of all ages that are, you know, have been putting on some weight, except for, of course, Otto. Yeah. Otto, Otto, looks, Otto you look like you're in great shape, actually. Well, yes. I, I walk a lot uh, and, and I golf and do stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just a, another yeah. little thought That's here. Great. We once had an article in the, in the uh, Project Independence newsletter about the fact that you don't have to join a gym to exercise. And w the the article was about um, somebody walking around their, their dining room table. And I'm saying this is a good time to do that. You can walk around your dining room table with some march music. And, uh, you know, <laughs> if you don't want to go out. <laughs> But anyhow, back to Dr. Susan with uh, you know, I, her experience. I think we have to be careful. You know, even myself, I was like, oh, when you first quarantine, like, what do you do? Like, what is there really to do? You sleep, you take a shower, you watch some TV. Initially, we were all so shocked. Um, and then food becomes, food becomes the comfort. And I really believe that it is very important for all of us to be very cognizant of the fact that we want to use food to fuel our body, sort of like gasoline for the tank. So 
I know food tastes so good and it's so delicious, but we also really always have to remind ourselves that really the intention of food is really to provide us with um, energy and with nutrients, right? And to keep us healthy. And it's really, although we have created food across the globe, we use it as pleasure. It's so nice to go to a beautiful restaurant and eat out before the pandemic days. The food really is, you know, there to, to keep us healthy. So if somebody is finding that they are or cooking a lot and eating a lot of what they're cooking, and baking, and maybe a little bit bored and then using food for that temporary comfort, you know, I always give everybody a three set, you know, a three step rule, stop, think, and listen, stop for just two seconds and stop and think, do I really want this cookie? Like, do I really want it? Or am I just like right now, I don't know what else to do with myself. Right. And think about it and then say to yourself, okay, listen, if you want, you can have it. Like have the cookie, have the lasagna. If you want it, of course, have it. But ask yourself, are you really hungry? And if the truth is you're really not hungry, then ask yourself, well, what are you? And you might just say, you know what? I'm bored. I'm frustrated. I'm feeling anxious. Um, I just feel a little trapped between these four walls. Okay, there's your answer. So what I say is, you know what? Put the food on the back burner. You can always go back to it. I'm not saying don't have it. But I'm saying is you can always go back to it and then say, okay, if, if this is how I'm feeling, now here we go to the mental health piece. Now we're checking in internally. That's exactly where we want to be. That's what this pandemic, this is why I say it's been a positive movement for us because it has forced us to check in internally inside. And what are you finding? You know what? I'm not like, you know what? I'm finding that I'm bored. I'm finding that, you know, my, I feel frustrated. Okay, let's do something about that other than eating. And then what are the options? Now, even though it's the pandemic, if we have, if our community, if they can get out either with an aid and a wheelchair or with a walker, or they can walk by themselves, despite the weather, I say, put on, you know, your, your weather gear if you need it, a hat for the sun, let's say, right? or walk at 5.30. But the point is, is that to be proactive and say, what can you do other than eating another action? So you don't self, because eating is really self-soothing. Unless you're really feeling super hungry, it's a form of self-soothing. And then that really is a symptom of emotional discomfort. So if you have emotional discomfort during the pandemic, I've got news for everybody. It's always been there. The emotional discomfort, not a new symptom. It's something that's been persistent and ongoing, but the pandemic gave us all an opportunity to stop, think, and listen. And all of a sudden we're checking in and we're like, you know what, in, inside of ourselves, we're just not feeling as empowered or fulfilled or content as we would like to be. But this time we're not going to use food to do it. This time we're going to say, what are some more positive coping strategies? Or what are some things that I need to figure out that I didn't want to look at within myself before? How can I manage these emotions and thoughts in a very calm and very cool and very systematic way so I can start to figure out what maybe needs a little, I'm not going to say change because I don't love the word change, but what needs a little shifting? What needs to shift, shift within yourself? So then you don't have to necessarily grab that food to eat. And don't get me wrong. Food is delicious. It's so nice. You sit, you get, it's, you get immediate gratification. And when you do. Right. Exactly. You, know? you cook for other people and they love it. It's good. But I love what you say. I love stop, think, listen. That applies to so many different activities that we do, you know, even buying something or, you know, if you're starting to feel anxious, you know, just see if you can stop, think about it and then just listen, listen, you know, and give yourself empathy too. a lot of self empathy. That's a fantastic point. I always say to somebody, okay, so you feel anxious. All right. So you feel a little depressed or you feel frustrated, agitated. That's okay. You can feel that, you know, acknowledge how you're feeling, but you don't have to act out on it to try to push the feeling away. So if you're feeling agitated, you don't go, you don't need to go and pick up that food just because you're sitting with agitation. What I tell my patients is sit with it, acknowledge that it's there, tell it, tell the agitation, 
I know that you're there. I feel you. I hear you. Stay as long as you need to. I know you try and tell me something through the agitation because that's your red flag. When your body is, when you're feeling hopeless or worried or concerned, depressed, ruminations, that's your body telling you that you need to look at something. So it's actually, it's a good sign, not necessarily a negative one. Right. And, you know, of course, food is, you know, if you're gaining a few pounds during this and that's kind of your go-to thing, um, you know, people you gain weight. Um, but of course, there are also uh, addiction yes. issues. People yep. who drink, people who use drugs, or, or maybe that was in the past. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of struggling going on with people that have, you know, issues with alcohol and, and, and drugs yep. and and, and all that, you know, the old demons come back and, um, you know, and, and, you know, unfortunately this, like you were saying, you know, people that have PTSD, so it's just kind of a reminder of where maybe you once were and, you know, that there is still help too, you know, it's still get in touch with your doctor, you know, let them kind of guide you through and give you support. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. This that's the whole point. The coping strategies are out there. You just have to be proactive to say, I need the help. And if you need the help, then the resources are there. But, al but also right. know that if you're sitting with, like um, Otto said, difficulties with the adjustment to the pandemic, difficulties adjusting, <clears throat> excuse me, adjusting to just, these are short-term changes that we all have had to make in order to ensure that we have long-term wellness and success. So this is just short term and also telling yourself this is a short term problem and it will resolve itself and knowing that it's short, mm -hmm. not going to last forever. We don't want to catastrophize this. And I have to say this, I hope I had just have a minute, but please, if somebody is experiencing mental health issues, turn off your TV because the TV, oh, TV right. networks are making a significant amount of money in sensationalizing and domestic terrorism, whether okay, of the Antifada or of the repeat of the riots, which are very scary. And if you look very closely, you're gonna see the same picture played over and over. The Wendy's is on fire. They're playing it a hundred times a day. It's, you know, after a while you need to know, step back from it, turn yeah. it off because it serves no purpose. It's not like the news is saying, this is what's happening and this is how we're gonna, this is what's gonna make it better. They're only telling you, this is what's bad. And that's just reinforcing, you know, um, negative thoughts, ruminations, and a sense of doom and gloom. That doesn't help our community. It doesn't help, doesn't help yeah. our world. So be smart enough to know, take, take, in your, take the resources that are going to help bring you up, not bring you down. I, I agree 100%. I have friends I, who I know watch TV all day horrible and they are the most negative yes. people um, i we have a deal here in this house where 6 30 i record the news we, we may not watch it at 6 30 oh. but we watch the news from 6 30 to 7 and that's it uh, because otherwise it, it's doom and gloom as you say and i i have mm -hmm. friends who watch the tv all day and it's they're in a very doom and gloom state yeah uh yeah, there's so many good things going on uh, around us that we have to pay attention to, uh, as opposed to there are bad things. There's no question about it. I mean, we can't be naive about that either, but <clears throat> you can't let it overpower you. Um, it's just not good. Yep. Um, you know, it's. It, I agree 100%. Yeah. The news is not good. <laughs> it's not good yeah. for ratings. Well, right. one more trite phrase that I like to use, and that is that uh, people uh, get into a rut and uh, I tell them they have to get off the pity pot. You know, uh, <laughs> everybody has problems. And, and if you're going to just dwell on yours and be on the pity pot all day long, eventually nobody's going to want to deal with you. That's a fact of life, whether you like it or not. You're right. About you know, people, yeah. you're right. you know, it, you know, let me, let me piggyback on that, what you just said, Otto, because I have some patients and they have all different capacities, but I have a philosophy. If you're breathing, 
okay? If you're breathing and you can walk or get around, then you, you should get outside, okay? Even if it's just an hour a day, get out of the house of your four walls, turn off the TV and get outside. Number, that's number one. If you're breathing, because guess what? It's a blessing. And to piggyback on what you just said, it could always be worse. And I'm not going to go into the stories when I go into assisted livings or nursing homes and I'm on the floor and I'm covered like a robot. Um, how I'm dressed is unbelievable. And I'm seeing what I'm seeing. You know what, Dr. Susan, we actually have to take a quick break and then we're gonna pick up where we left off. We'll be back for the last segment. It goes so fast. We still have a lot to cover. Um, we'll be right back to Project Independence and You. Project Independence is the Aging in Place initiative of the town of North Hempstead. One of the many services we offer is help at home with minor home maintenance. Call 311 or 869-6311 to get more information or receive services. Okay, welcome back to Project Independence and You. It's unreal that we are in our final segment with a full hour with um, Dr. Susan Linder, but I mean, coping with stress regarding COVID-19 is just endless. I mean, and it's just so many things that are new to all of us, but it's happening to everybody all at once, you know, and you were, before we went to this break, we were talking, you were talking about some of the clients that you have, some of the people that you're talking to and um, kind of, I want to say how they're negative, how it's all, it's too much, too much of watching the news. And um, so if you just want to continue where, where you were at when we had to go to break. Oh, no, I was just saying that, you know, it's very easy to be negative and like, look what's happening. But, I, you know, everyone should be reminded that it can always be, it could always be worse. And trust me, there are there are many situations that I could share with you that I won't where it really is worse. And we're not going to focus on. It's not a comparison. But what it is, is that all of us have to be, as I say, we have to be warrior spirit souls. And we have to focus, redirect our thoughts, reframe the negative, and take action from a place that is positive thoughts, positive affirmations, and also action, positive actions. You know, you, you have to walk the walk and talk the talk. So if you think that um, maybe it would be nice to go out to the garden, it's time then to get out to the garden and do that. If it's, you know, just taking a walk around the neighborhood is really nice. I know more people that have gotten to know their neighbors during this pandemic than I ever have. Oh, yeah, people, definitely. Yeah, right. People have planted flowers. People have had like parties in their backyard, 10 people or less. And everyone's like six yeah. three feet apart. And it's doable. If there's a will, there's a way. And if you if somebody right. doesn't have the will, then, you know, then then you need the support. There's your red flag. If you don't have the will to really try to figure out how you can either adjust to this, cope a little bit more effectively, um, create some um, new, let's say, hobbies, or just to go back to something that feels nice and familiar and is safe and nurturing, that's your red flag to know then you do need to make that call to 311 to our town or call your doctor. But there's so many other things. I really believe the community is empowered and we are empowered within ourselves and this reflection to look within. Um, it not only is it feasible, but it, it, it can manifest in wonderful new opportunities to live life a little bit more, maybe calmer and simpler, right? Yeah. And with a little bit more content. Absolutely. And listen, even look at this. Usually we're doing, we're meeting, Christina schedules these great, you know, um, programs for us and all of the hosts we're rushing to get to the radio station right we got to get there on time, right? right and everything and look at this it wasn't such a rush to do this zoom because we had it scheduled right and right it's sort of like look at this i i mean for me it's an hour and 10 minutes that it took out of my time to get to the radio station because we're doing it here so now i insert inside of myself i'm a little bit calmer and a little you know having right. a nice day. Yeah. I see Christina shaking her head. Yes, yes, yes. So I know that, you know, we're, we're all feeling it like Christina and I have something similar. You know, we are people that are an auto too. Like, you know, we go, we just go, we just go places. We do things, we have appointments, we don't stop, you know, um, the family, the cooking, the, this, the, that. I mean, I'm, you know, I work full time. I teach yoga. I go to the gym. I've got 
you know, older kids, but you know, I'm busy. I'm, I'm busy. And that's just how it's been. And this has been the biggest change in my yeah. life. I mean, most people too. So I'm just saying like, yeah. but you know what? I don't want to say I'm kind of getting used to it because I do miss the, just even knowing that I can get in my car and I can go to the gym or I can go meet a friend or I can drive to work. I can go, you know, what, whatever it is. But, you know, there's, there is some pluses, like you were saying, you know, and you're almost like, it's like almost a return to a simpler time. You know, we're not going out to dinner. We're not ordering in as much, you know, we're cooking, you're sitting with the family. You're kind of getting to know what everybody else is doing. You know, like I feel my sons are in their twenties and doing all different things, but like, I, I feel like I, I know what's going on more yeah. now and they're, you know, and we're responsive to each other, you know? So I, I kind of like that. And I know that when, you know, one goes back to school and the other is both back to the job and all that on a regular schedule, it's just, it's going to change, you know, it goes back to that. I want to say rat race kind of thing, you know? But it has been enjoyable, and if people can hold on to it, right, Otto? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I just want to go back to the words that Susan used there, and that is, uh, need the will. You need the will to want to be able to do something better. Yeah. And and how do you get people? Like it's a determination. You know, you need the will to want to do it. And uh, you remember we had a guy on the show who is a friend of mine who went through two prosthesis legs uh, over a period of time. And we had him on the radio for the reason that he was a good example of handling a uh, negative situation. Yeah. And how did he handle it? One of his big things was every morning be, when he was in a rehab place, which he was twice for a hundred days, he would set a goal for himself for that day, whether it be, I'm going to get out of bed today. Yep as a goal. Yep. That was the goal. Yep. It didn't have to be, I'm going to the moon. Yes. You know, you'd set a goal that for you yeah. is attainable, you know, and that goal may be, uh, I'm going to uh, make breakfast for myself today yep. or whatever. Yes. You know, but I, I agree with what yeah. your words were about. You need the will. And, and I believe you have to work at developing the will. Uh, you know, you want it, you have to want to do it. And if you don't want to do it, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. You know, we have a few, only a few minutes left. I'm not sure how many, but, um, and to end this hour and Dr. Susan, I would just love for you to kind of, you know, first let people know how, if they're interested in talking to you, are you available? Do you, do you have take on clients or what's your kind of availability? And also some like thoughts, you know, getting through this pandemic well you know it's uh, if our listeners have listened to the program so far we already know that they are their wheels are spinning so whether whether we mm -hmm. targeted like let's say a coping strategy that may work for them or we provided them with a resource we know that our listeners are already thinking about okay i have to maybe think outside the box and thinking out mm -hmm. thinking outside the box is really there, there you go. There's your affirmation that you're getting the best out of the pandemic because now you're looking at things that are maybe a little bit different and maybe a little bit uncomfortable, but that's okay. We, mm -hmm. We're resilient. We can persist and we persevere. And yeah, I do see patients and I do see clients um, in my private practice, but I'm only doing tele-mental health right now. And I do have a book that's coming out in the late fall and it's called Reset, it's called Reset Your Soul. Reset Your Soul. Okay. And where would that book be available? It's going to be available on all the web, like, you know, Amazon and Kindle. Amazon. And all okay. of that good stuff. And I have some websites that this pandemic for me has been great because I completed all my websites and I they'll be up and running. And I have some really great mental health resources on my website, which is going to be part of um, a radio show that I'll be doing on AM starting in the late fall. It's called. Wonderful. What's the website? It's called Keeping Life Real. Com. Keeping life real com. No spaces. Right. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Could you say that one half slower for us uh, hard of hearing older people? Yeah, well, the, re the website will be up probably by early next week, if not the end of next week, because it's linked to some other websites that I have also. But it's called keepinglifereal.com. 
Keeping Life Real. On that website, I have a lot of resources and support about for mental health and just a lot of links to other resources. So if people are interested in knowing like what is anxiety, what is ADHD, it, it doesn't matter the population, whether it's children, middle aged, older age, it's on there. And then that's, and there's a link on there for my book, resetyoursoul.nyc. And, um, and then I have one other um, website, which if somebody visits, they'll see it's called, it's a certain modality that I do with therapy. It's called QHHT. A lot of people don't do it, but um, for those who are interested, it's called quantum healing hypnosis technique. It's really quite a, um, I don't know, profound intervention for those who really have um, persistent mental health issues that really need some resolution where traditional psychotherapy hasn't worked in the past. So that sounds like another show, Christina. <laughs> we'll have to do that. That sounds very interesting. Um, and just so you know, Dr. Susan, that anybody can call 311. Christina has all your contact information. So if you weren't able to get the website, um, you know, you can always call 311. We'll make sure that sure. they get contact. Definitely. Contact I'm, with I'm, always here for the, I'm always here for the community. <clears throat> the community has been excellent to me. And I am very appreciative and I really feel like giving back is very important to me. And that's my little contribution. Well, um, you're doing great work. And I know that, you know, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people looking into this. Um, and, you know, it's just a lot of great, um, great, great information. I was thinking, someone once told me there was that the three or four D's when we were talking about anything, not just food, but it's delay. I can't remember them though. Now, I'll have to remember them, give them to Christina. It's delay, yeah. delay for 10. <laughs> and then, it, um, I don't know if you're familiar I'm with not. those, like you delay, it's delay. And then you kind of, the next step is, you know, like, do you really want it? And then, you know, just kind of like evaluating what, what's going on, you know, before you indulge in that piece of cake or, you know, before you pick up that cigarette, because that's another thing um, that, you know, I, I hear people are going back to smoking yes. too, which is, you know, they have all this time to be alone. So it's like, do you really, do you really want to go back there? You know, kind of, a, you know, I think, um, uh, let me just piggyback on that quickly. But I remember like probably last year when I was on one of the shows, we had spoken about coping strategies and we were saying how, whether it's yeah. food, whether it's cigarette smoking, whether it's online gambling, whether it's online sex, whether it's online, um, it doesn't really matter. Alcohol, drinking, smoking, marijuana, vaping, online sex, you know, porno, gambling, whatever it should be. Everyone needs to know those are coping strategy. And we're not saying that right. thoroughly bad. <clears throat> There's no judgment here because I'm, I'm not into judgment. I have eliminated the word that this is good, good and bad and not in my dictionary. Okay. So we're not judging it, but we, we have to look that if anything is in excess, that's when, you know, it becomes a problem. So if the eating is right. in excess, okay, you want to take a drag or a cigarette, if that's something in your repertoire, but if it becomes something where you're going cigarette after cigarette, guess what? Now it's become a negative coping strategy. It's not effective and it has long-term negative repercussions, right? So it's something right. to talk about, right? Down the road. All great stuff. I, you know, we're at the end of the segment. Of course, it just flew by. Wonderful information. I'm sure you'll be back again. If anybody listening wants to get in touch with, um, you know, Dr. Susan, we have the information. Christina's got all of her contacts. We want to thank you so much for spending this hour with us um, and look forward to, you know, speaking with you again. Um, we'll be back with Project Independence. Thank you so much. Thank you. Like what you hear? Here's how you can let us know. Give us a call at 516-299-2626 or email us at info at wcwp.org. Like us at facebook.com slash mywcwp and leave a comment or tweet us at mywcwp. We welcome all kinds of feedback. To directly support the podcast you just enjoyed, leave a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you'd like to give back, visit WCWP.org and click the support tab. Thanks for listening from your friends at WCWP.